Hey guys, I want to create a quick video about some of the Zoom settings that I think will help us in the coming days and weeks if you're hosting a Zoom meeting for our worship assemblies or Bible study. Uh, what we want to do is uh, limit uh, what some people can do to create uh, potential disruptions. Some people are finding links online to join collaborative meetings for Zoom and uh, sharing pornography, uh, otherwise disrupting the meeting and uh, sending the, the organizers into panic and they're having to shut down the meeting and, and some of these people actually create other usernames and, and rejoin the meeting, um, which is, can be problematic. So these settings, I hope, will help limit that disruption. Uh, the Zoom technology was originally meant for collaboration within companies or groups that, that knew everyone, not as a social media uh, kind of platform where people or total strangers could join. Um, so what we're going to do is look at a couple of these settings that I think will be helpful. And we're still I'm still learning this as well. The first one is manage participants. If you click on the manage participants, if you're the host of the meeting, what you'll get is a side window here. And you want to select the mute all button. And what this will do is normally uh, make sure that the allow participants to unmute themselves is unchecked. You don't want to allow participants to unmute themselves in the meeting. What this does is puts the control back on you. But you do have the responsibility now, if someone else is going to be saying something in the worship assembly, to unmute their microphone by hovering over uh, the participant and unmuting them for that part of the session. We may want to assign someone to kind of moderate uh, these, uh, these sessions so that the person uh, leading in worship or, or leading a Bible study can just dedicate on uh, communicating the content that they have prepared. Someone else is dedicating to moderating and, and feeding them uh, comments and making sure no one else is causing disruptions. So that is the managed participants. The second one is sh uh, sharing screens. Again, we want to limit the ability of people to share inappropriate content. And by default, anyone can share their screens and share whatever they want. So if you click uh, Advanced Sharing Options under the Share Screen menu, make sure that only the host can share. This puts you in full control of who can share. Um, we may need to figure out how other people could share a PowerPoint if they want. You'll still be able to see uh, people speaking uh, on their camera if they have the camera activated. You'll still be able to hear the audio if you unmute them, but they will not be able to share inappropriate content if they join the meeting. And the third thing here is uh, the chat. If you click on chat, it opens up the chat window. And by default, anyone can chat to anyone they want and share inappropriate links and make inappropriate comments. And so if you click on the settings icon here on the right, just make sure that only the host Participants can chat with only the host, and that way it puts you full control of moderating those comments. I could see people using this in a worship assembly to input prayer requests, uh, maybe ask questions about the lesson. If you're in a Bible study, people can ask questions there if they don't feel like making uh, a comment. And if you think about the worship assembly, uh, it's more of a, uh, a program. I hate to use that word, but that's how it is. If you're in a Bible study, you're sitting around and you're collaborating, different people are talking. When you're in a worship assembly, all the chairs are facing the front, and usually one person is speaking at a time. It's decently and in order. You have a song leader, you have a preacher. So it's more of like a, a broadcast kind of scenario where uh, if you have, you know, I don't know how this is going to work out in the future, but having everyone's uh, cameras popping up throughout the session, having uh, background noise and people making comments throughout the session could be disruptive to a worship service. And so I, I strongly suggest that we as whoever is the host, that we disable people's video, we disable people's uh, microphones, and just treat this as programming. Um, and then uh, at some point in the worship service, when it, if it's appropriate, you want to take comments, uh, you can unmute everyone's microphone and ask them for prayer requests and that sort of thing. That's just my idea. We're still learning, and we'll see what works best as, uh, going forward. But I hope this has been helpful to you, and uh, if you have any questions, uh, let me know.